Hello, Star Seeds. Welcome to our weekly show, Star Seed Mission Support. We are so happy and excited to be with our family here once again. We are live every Saturday afternoon at 4 p.m. This is for all the people that want to tune in live that are listening later. Um, today, we are going to be talking about. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Today we're talking about creation sexuality, something that we're very excited about because the sexual energy and the purification of the sexual energy is super relevant in the world right now. There's a lot of different cosmic energies and even festivals on the earth plane that are happening in celebration of these energies. And so we're going to talk about it. Um, I'm going to start off with my usual uh, field clearing, get everybody inside the energy bubble by doing some singing. But well, before I do that, um, <laughs> this is really awkward <laughs> because I don't really do the social media thing very well, but um, I do actually have an Instagram. <laughs> and so if you want to find me on Instagram, and you should because we're going to be posting daily content on there kind of a more intimate way to hang out with me sometimes, you know, I might just hop on and tell you something that's on my mind. So if you feel like getting smaller injections of this energy on a daily basis, go follow me on Instagram at earthstar.sanctuary. And on that note, I'm going to uh, duck and shy away into the bushes, and by that I mean my singing. <laughs>
Hi everybody! Welcome to Starseed Mission Support! Starseed Mission Support! <laughs> We're so excited and joyful. Welcome to all the people that are tuning in. If you're first time hanging out with us live, um, this is the one day in the week where we hang out with our Starseed family all over the world and we dive deep into the most necessary and prevalent and relevant codes and information that empowers us empowers us to embody our highest soul frequencies and our mastery so that we can create abundance create majesty create beauty and create the new earth together so we have a very exciting very exciting discussion today and um yeah just wait before we get into it i'm just gonna real quick say that i have been invited to this amazing online event it's free it's called the return of the priestess summit and i have to say that i get invited to these things a lot and when dawn reached out to me she's like i don't know like a huggable grandma and she might i don't know how she feel about that if she heard me say that but it's just her energy is so warm like you can just fall into a marshmallow or something and so um, after we had our call, I just really felt so in, in alignment with this event and um, post a picture of the, um, you know, those summit events where you get the circles with all of the different heads of the people presenting. <laughs> anyway, there's priestesses from all lineages. Um, it's really a, a rainbow kind of event. And that's what I'm so excited about is that all of these different cultures of priestesses are going to get to present their specific flavor of this unified uh, teachings of divine love and so the link is just in the description below uh, my talk was particularly about you know Taoist sexual alchemy and uh, especially healing multi-dimensional sexual trauma which we're going to go into talking about today um so I feel like this is really also me integrating all these codes coming in for our Pleiadian ceremonies next month. Um, these are the four days of ceremony where we're going to be inside of this ceremony container for all four days over the Pleiadian alignment when the earth, the sun, and the Pleiades are in direct alignment. This is when the Pleiadian energy can really shower the earth with this brilliant energy. And as the Pleiadians are very involved in the healing of this planet and partic particularly around the Draco reptilian wars, it's also really relevant that we're doing this sexual healing. And so if you find that this energy is really calling you and that these codes and these topics are really relevant to your life right now, I really highly recommend joining these four days as well. We're going to be doing some massive, massive work together. You can find the link down in the description as well. Okay, so let's get into our discussion today. I know you guys are really excited because who doesn't like to talk about sex? You know, it's all over. Humans are apparently obsessed with it. I don't know what exactly they're obsessed with because, you know, the kind of sex that they're obsessed with, you know, isn't even 1% of what is possible. And I feel like the obsession is really just, you know, our mind and our collective seeking for that treasure, that thing that is so powerful inside of us, that is the core of who we are. And because we don't have any role models, because the society is constantly spewing this disgusting version of it, you know, we just hook onto that and we're like, okay, this is what I'm obsessed with. But really, why is this energy so seductive and attractive? Why are we obsessed with talking about it and expressing it in these ways? Um, what are the taboos that are really, um, you know, the shame and the guilt and the repression, you know, I feel like these are the things that are at the root of a lot of the issues that we have on the planet right now, particularly things like sexual slavery, human trafficking. And so as we go in to analyze and to tune into our energy and to work on this inside of ourself, know that as you restore your original connection to your original sexual creative energy, that this is actually directly healing the planet and actually you know it's multi-fold there's so many dimensions to us that on the one hand you know just doing that work is going to transform the planet because you will be bringing in the medicine you're bringing in the antidote or the vaccine to the distortions to the to the virus but as you activate these energies you'll find that you're actually going to be able to create anything you want and for those of us who are starseeds you know we're on this planetary mission what is it that we really want? 
probably things that are in alignment with, you know, we want this abundance to create structures and organizations that are really going to support the healing and the upliftment of the world. So highly relevant topic. I love it. This is definitely my favorite subject to talk about. I feel like if I could just focus and teach one thing, this would probably be it. Okay, so I'm going to start with just talking a little bit about the societal programming and the taboos and the danger of repression. Okay, so when you look in the world today, even though when you turn on the TV, you get all of these, you know, barely closed, very seductive and suggestive images just being shown to you in your face um, that is being shown in the in the media but when you go into society this energy is actually often shunned right so is this double-edged sword this conflict where on the one hand we're being shown you know this suggestive and over sexualized image but then when you go into reality you know there's all of this fear and shame around the, the subject itself like you can see you know a, a, a bikini dancer on tv but if you saw that same dancer in the park you know you would be like you know there's that there's that rift right so that rift is basically um in itself <laughs> a virus or a weapon let's say because on the one hand, they're showing you this distorted image of what sexual energy is so that you begin to imprint with that. You begin to embody those energies yourself so that, you know, as a child growing up, if that's the frequency of sexual energy you're seeing, then you're going to say, oh, well, that's what sexual energy is. And so you're going to express sexual energy in that way, in that, you know, um, suggestive and degraded and often very yicky kind of way. Um now, then, when you go into the world, in our, our physical reality, because we've seen so much sexual violence in the world, you know, men, first of all, have felt like it's just normal for them to just be very disrespectful with their sexual energy. And this has created this aversion of females that actually get afraid to be suggestive. Like, you know, a lot of girls, you know, gain a little weight or put on baggy clothes to avoid being seen in that way. So... This is a very diseased system. This is a disease that we're seeing in our society. And it was created that way to basically create a slavery prison. And the reason for that is, you know, your sexual energy in your physical body, and you've heard me say this 50 billion times, but your sexual energy is literally your creation energy. This is how your physical body experiences life. And that is so profound, and it should carry so much reverence with that. How we relate to our sexual energy should be the same as how we relate and perceive creation. And that is very sacred. There needs to be reverence in that, right? And so when we bring up, bring up these topics, immediately we can see that there's a lot of different filaments of that program that are deeply embedded in human consciousness and it requires for us to really dive deep into what those things are in order to liberate ourselves from the confines of that so for example if you're walking outside and you're kind of nervous and you're checking around you're like is anybody going to jump out at me and attack me do i need to like shut myself down and hide my beauty or you know even if you're scrolling on facebook and you're looking at women and you're like oh that lady is you know sexy or whatever like are you mindful of how you are engaging and interacting and maybe even co-creating with the fallen fallen matrix right so we're going to go into that a little bit more um that is the most human and present and 3d layer of the sexual trauma the next layer up would be you know people that actually have experienced sexual trauma which is actually highly rampant right Almost every woman that I personally know have been sexually violated in some way. Um, and, you know, this would involve physical body as well as energetic healing on that front. Now, then we step out into the multidimensional sexual trauma, which is also rampant on this planet. You know, this is beyond just the programming that you receive from the MK Ultra frequencies in the TV. But, you know, interdimensional abductions 
And a lot of these experiences, you know, are, are actually very common in the starseed community because these beings specifically uh, are after source energy and they're after dimming of your light. And so if you have gone through all of this healing, but there's just still something very distorted and freaky inside of your vessel, then this is probably what you're going to be looking at. Okay. Now, after we talk about all of that, we're also going to talk about inner hieroscamos today. So your inner feminine and masculine and, you know, checking in with the relationship between those two forces. Because again, we're talking about how our internal alchemy, our internal energy, the frequencies that are held within our vessel and our unconscious, this is the reality that we're actually creating. And so in that regard, you know, every time you create a traumatic relationship or you're inside of a relationship where love is not reciprocated or the other person is, you know, maybe unavailable, all of that is a reflection in the reality to show you maybe something is out of distortion inside of your body, especially if you're creating the same kind of pattern over and over again. So we have a lot of content to get through today. Um, as you can tell, I'm very excited and passionate about this subject. And, you know, I'm, I'm very candid about my personal um, experience in this because I do feel like being very open and vulnerable with my own experiences is often a really powerful way that, you know, people feel safe and comfortable in relating to their own experiences. And so, um, yeah, so, you know, I grew up in the world and I was molested when I was little and then, you know, consequently experienced a lot of sexual trauma in my in my life and when I started waking up to this I realized that every time I tried to create something the energy would just leak out or it would not actually come into fruition like it's almost like I get this amazing idea and then I'm so excited about it and then it just fizzles or it literally just gets stuck and I, I feel like I get bloated and I'm like you know I have this amazing idea I just want to birth something into the world and then I hit something or maybe somebody says you can't do that right you're not good enough you're not ready you don't have what it takes you don't have the money you can't do it you know some force comes in or even sometimes is myself so all of those are examples of when we have blocked up or leaking sexual energy because when the sexual energy arises you know that is the life force that we can put into creating and so oftentimes now, after having gone through the deprogramming and healing, and by the way, I'm nowhere close to being completely deprogrammed. I go through this kind of stuff every day still. And this is really something that requires community to work through because when it's just you, you're not, you know, you're not coming into the experiences that you need to have to actually resolve certain things, right? You need like those you know, we're talking about relating here, the sacral chakra, the flow of energy. And so you do need a community or just people that are on the same wavelength that are doing these deprogramming work together. And so this is why it's relevant, right? We are the people. There's 150 people here right now. And we are the people that need to get really honest with ourselves and present with how pure we are experiencing our love and our awareness and our presence. And then as we begin to co-create and share with each other, things are going to come up, right? Because that's just part of the process. You know, I think when I was in Vipassana, Buddha straight up told me that this round is not just about people getting enlightened inside of their body. It's about communities coming into enlightenment together because, you know, for a, a lot of reasons, but one of them is that, you know, without the community, without the people, without, you know, all of these energies that are here together, we won't be able to see the distortions that are still inside. And so the reason why all of these distortions are here is because if all of us are fully embodied in our creator power, meaning we have cosmic energy flowing through our sacral chakra and our root chakra, and it's like, right? And we're all like, yeah, we're millionaires. Like there would be no cabal. <laughs> We would have created this new world. We'll be empowered in our true sense of ourself, but we don't have that yet. And in fact, the false matrix and the cabal keep throwing these curveballs at us like, oh, the government's going to come and save us, or these aliens are going to land and they're going to take us to some other planet where none of this shit is happening. It's like, we did not 
come to earth right now just to leave and get saved by ourselves like it would make no sense so all that is to say it's time to integrate and be like look we are the ground crew we're literally the aliens that are here to help this planet right i can't see you guys but just raise your hand and do the jazz fingers if you are an alien here on the planet and you are here to transform this place okay it's you it's me it's all of us and the most important thing and this is a place that you know is really targeted the most because you know for a star seed we're very open we've always been connected to god to a higher spirits to spirituality and to our love right but it's the lower half of our body that's really gotten the brunt of this 3d reality this 3d matrix our soul had a really hard time processing and getting really into the nitty gritty you know maybe this is why you didn't really hang out with certain people in high school or you know understand the attraction to watching reality tv shows or whatever it is you know there was always a part of you that was aligned to this higher energy and so now is about bringing that energy down into the lower chakras particularly initiating this fire that we have this fire of creation this beautiful energy that we have to create life we can create life you guys and i don't just mean you know we get to create a baby even though that is the most beautiful and profound thing but we can literally create timelines realities centers books <laughs> courses whatever it is that you want to create that you know you're here to create it's just that maybe that sexual energy due to the repression due to the societal programming due to the fears have really been locked away and again that is why the distortions are there right they basically created this slavery system by distorting and siphoning human creativity and sexual energy and so that means then liberating our sexual energy is the first and foremost important thing that we need to do in order for us to be um, on our mission okay so some of the things just for an example right one of this just keeps wanting to come in because i think is the most relevant it's like okay and like what i'm about to say might be like shocking like you might not have like thought about this before or might be like is that taboo is that like should you be ashamed about that like i have had this situation in the past where somebody comments and they're like well i'm aroused like should i be ashamed like i'm aroused in this circle and i always say you know these are the frequencies of life that are flowing through you should be excited i feel like people should live life excited right that's what it is when you're aroused is that you feel life force flowing in now it's what happens after that that's the most important you recognize that this creative cosmic energy is activated that's actually really good because a lot of people that have been traumatized they have a hard time even activating that energy so for you if you have this energy and it's aroused and you feel excited and you feel the sexual energy you're actually really lucky okay so it's especially important for you to understand how to move that energy to best be of service to yourself to your community and to this world right now so for example you're walking down the street the current normal thing is if you become aroused you instantaneously hide it right it's one or the other you shut it down you hide it or you, you cat call somebody <laughs> and there's no there's no other like those are the two kind of normal or accepted forms of behavior now what if this is just my crazy thought because I actually just exist in a state of arousal for the most part. Um, this is how I create, right? So actually, I find a lot more pleasure in creating things than actual sex sometimes because, you know, for me, the ability to channel this cosmic energy into form, this is like the gift of being a human, <laughs> right? So when I'm creating, even if it's just building my website or writing my book or dreaming or just brain dumping, I'm in a state of arousal. And, you know, I, I like to say that I get wet and I feel this ecstatic energy and I pull it up. Now, there's a reason why your hands are connected to your shoulders and that is connected into the heart chakra because we create with our love, right? When we have these inspiration is because we love the world. We love people. We love the planet that we go and we channel this creation energy to perpetuate life. And so 
I think in the highest form of civilization, we should have a civilization of people that are liberated, that are aroused by life, that feel no kind of anything towards sexual energy besides recognizing it as the highest sacred source of creation that we get to experience inside of a human body. Now, I know that can be a bit of a stretch and it's going to require some reprogramming, right? Because in our human society, you know, when you feel that attraction, you immediately want to jump in bed with them. But in my experience, you know, having had a lot of exes, <laughs> nine out of 10 times when you feel attraction towards somebody, it's not because you're supposed to jump in bed with them. It could be a whole bunch of different things. For example, if you have been sexually abused and your abuser was a certain frequency, you could have the resonance and the distortion of their distortion inside of your body. And this is how then you are attracted to people that carry that same resonance. And this is actually how we attract abusers back into our life in different kinds of ways, right? That's one example. Another example is say you have a trauma and then somebody else also has the same trauma. Now, when you come together and you're attracted by that resonance, you can actually do a lot of good work together by being that sacred mirror, by recognizing that you both have this shared trauma and you can move through it together, right? That's the second example. The third example, which is really common in the spiritual community, is you find this attraction towards somebody, but it's because your souls are encouraging you to meet because there's something you need to teach each other, there's something you need to co-create on, there's something that, or there's information that you need to exchange, Right, so that attraction energy is literally just your energy being pulled towards something. And, you know, the people that, you know, sometimes come in and say, well, I feel attracted to you or there's sexual energy arousing. Like, you know, I am, I'm a priestess and priestesses are channels between realms. And so what we're doing in this session is opening up a portal to cosmic creation energy. And so actually you should be feeling elated. You should be feeling activated. Now what we're inspiring us to do is to take that creation energy right up into our heart and cause the cosmic soul self coming right down into our heart. And now we're ready to create, right? <laughs> So I feel like um, this is obviously the most interesting thing about like living out in the forest with community because these are the energies that are starting to cleanse because inside the false matrix, you have all of these walls that are built around you that keep you from truly connecting with other people, all of these beliefs and all of these societal norms, you know, particularly, you know, male female relationships there's these beliefs that you know oh males can't ever keep it in their pants and that means you can't ever have a guy friend or you can't ever be just friends with a guy because you know guys are pigs or you know if a guy wants to be friends with you he just wants in your pants like all of these little subconscious belief systems are actually distortions because as i'm saying you know in this clear in a clear communal space in a clear society Everybody recognizes that everybody else is a divine, beautiful creator being. And so everybody should actually be aroused or elated or activated by each other. And this is actually how we co-create together by consistently inspiring each other into our best self. You know, activating these energies to co-create. This is how all of the major ancient civilizations existed right? When you look into the African tribes or the Taoist communities, the women's were bare chested because the understanding that, you know, these female vessels, they create and they channel cosmic infinite creation energy enough to actually bring a being across dimensions. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, you know, the women, if they are free to be themselves, if they're free to channel these energies freely, then they can nourish the land, nourish the people, nourish everyone, and there'll be abundance. And I believe that there, this is why there's poverty in the world, because it's just not enough creative life force that's flowing through humanity. And so we have this sense that there's not enough life force. And so we're creating this reality where we have this belief of scarcity, there being not enough. It's because our creative energy is not allowed to flow and is being limited. And so there's actually not enough creative energy 
go, to go around as it is, right? So I'm, I'm dropping bombs today. Somebody says we should not be sexing with anyone and everyone. It is sacred. <laughs> it's true. When you transfer bodily fluids, you are also transferring spirits. Absolutely. 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 But this is also true with, you know, just being in intimate space. You know, you're, you're sharing energy. And this is what I'm trying to get at is that, you know, sex is not the only way energy gets exchanged. And right now in our society, it, it kind of is like you're either kind of connected to people or you're having sex with them. There's like no in between. There's no understanding of what the other possibilities are you know even in these and I'm my parents are married and they don't really have any other friends really so they're just together and there's all sorts of wild stuff that comes out of that kind of thing so anyway <laughs> trying to get at something's here so anyway I feel like co-creation is probably the most exquisite and brilliant thing we get to experience. And that comes with the territory of, you know, respect and really seeing the other person as they are, seeing the other person as who they are on a soul level. So you can truly respect them and revere them and see what they have to offer. And when everyone does that for each other, we are pretty much rid of all of the different kinds of distortions we have in the world, honestly. Um, anyway, so we're going to go into multidimensional sexual trauma. So this is something that I want to just kind of step into tenderly. And somebody said, what if you're that one rare gem who's spiritually contracted to sex with sex with everyone? I love that you brought this in, okay? Because I need to say this. There are such incredible creatures who do embody this ability to become a shaman that works with sexual energy. But in order to actually do that, there are so many initiations that you need to go through because the level of integrity that you need to be in, in order to actually offer that, to other people is extraordinary, right? This is the ultimate mastery of that energy because again, when that sexual energy comes in, it could be very seductive. It could be very rousing. You're like, oh, I just gotta go and, and have sex with something. Now, the mastery of sexual energy come in, not getting the arousal, but actually when you're in that state of, let's say, lust or passion, can you still actually control that energy and move it into the heart? Can you still work with that energy without leaking it, you know, without wasting it, without going into lust? And I haven't really seen that many people that can embody that le level of mastery. I would love to see it. I know that there's lots of people in the spiritual community who are like, I'm a sex shaman or whatever. But just to say that there's such a high level integrity that needs to be embodied there because it needs to be completely in service to other right? Meaning you recognize that this energy is flowing through your vessel. So at no point should you actually go into the lust if you're inside of that experience. And right now, you know, I am just seeing a lot of people that are running before they can walk and not moving through their initiations and not doing the purification and then going out there and saying, you know, I'm a sex shaman. I actually recently just had a psychotherapist, you know, get handed um, their community came together and said, you know, you, you have to stop practicing this because, you know, you're not in integrity. And at this point, I haven't seen that many people who are. So I encourage you, to, <laughs> if that is something that, I mean, it's not something that you choose to do. Shamanism really sh shows up and chooses you. And when it does, you choose whether or not you're going to follow through with the initiations because you always have a choice, right? So it's not like you get this download, like, oh, I'm a sex shaman, and then all of a sudden you're going out there and having sex with people. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> Coming in with the heat there, just saying, I'm watching you, and I'll be so happy. Because you know what? This word that I just came up with recently is God rod. <laughs> when the God rod is 
activated, there is nothing more valuable on this planet right now. And I believe that. Because, you know, as we're saying that wombs can really channel in cosmic creation energy, when you look out there, how many women actually do have a completely healed womb? Like, we've really just been trampled by the machine. You know, even through, I'm going to start talking about past life experiences with priestesses and how even a lot of priestesses have been, um, just had terrible rituals done to them, particularly to steal their sexual energy. And for the most part, you know, those shamans and, and those people that claim that they, they have embodied a certain level of mastery over the sexual energy, they're still out there siphoning women. And so that is just something that I, I cannot allow to continue. And so I have to just like say it like this. So if then you are somebody that really wants to work with this energy, then start to notice it. Start to build a relationship with your sexual energy. Start to pull it up when it comes up into the heart and pour it out into your hands and see what you can unconditionally give to, unconditionally nourish Right, and after a certain point, you you come into a wholeness with that. All right, so I'm gonna go into the multidimensional sexual trauma because I don't want to ramble at you guys forever. <laughs> Even though this is really fun. <laughs> okay. So some of the most relevant multidimensional sexual traumas that I see are abductions, um, greys, zetas, reptilians. Um, I won't go into it too much because I don't want to just talk about it. We're going to go into the healing around it. Um, and if this is something that you are really working through or you really resonating with, I just highly recommend you coming to our four-day ceremony next month because, you know, these... And you're going to, you know, I'm going to pull in the energies. We're going to have a little ceremony after our talk today. But the energies are really amping up. The galactics, they're, they're not joking around anymore. Like, we're here to support. And so we can accomplish so much with these different dimensional levels of healing if we focus at it on this gateway for a few days. So again, if you're somebody that is, you know, needing the support at this time, um, you're going to be able to get what you need in the group healing container and is even more powerful when there's more beings together, actually, I've experienced. So um, some other examples are, you know, the ancient priestesshood. And I talk about these in the Return of the Priestess interview that was recorded. Um, you know, the witch burnings, they were really a front. Um, the things that happened to the priestesses, because once again, Priestess energy is cosmic creation energy, right? And that, I was looping back now, I lost that train of thought, where the God Rod is the most valuable thing because when you are in alignment and when you are actually pure source love energy, you have the ability to restore life to the womb. And then what you're doing is actually, you know, really supporting a woman in her healing with your sacred sexual energy, and once you have, you know, that's just one of the things when you have an activated God Rod, I guess you can just literally create anything else too. But, you know, for a man to truly support a woman in that way, it's profound at this time on earth. Particularly because, you know, the woman's energy has been siphoned and tortured and hijacked and stolen and degraded for so long. Right? And, you know, I feel like I'm going to go into this with the hieroscamos. But at this point, you know, I'm, I'm not here to point fingers at men or whatever. I just, I just think that it's time for us to really work together because it's not even the men's fault. This is just the system. Like the violence and the demons or whatever you want to call them, they came in and they programmed the men to be violent towards the women. When in nature, men love women because women are the source of life. So, you know, in community, the men support the women they love the women they protect the women right this is nature the natural template and so you know even though i have been raped and all these terrible things have happened to me and they were men that did it i recognize that it's not all of men that's the problem and this is also a huge issue in the society right now you know my little brother he's 15 and feminism is apparently 
this whole hot topic in their school and these 15 year old girls are saying kill all men <laughs> it's just just like the whole other side of the spectrum and what we really want is for men and women to come together in sacred reverence and co-creation and this is what we're talking about you know we want to get to a point where we have our inner hieros gamos on fleek and we're going to get into that so that by the end of our ceremony together you know we're really feeling whole we're feeling like we have forgiven we feel like we have come home and come to the home of our own power so we can go out there actually be a healing force and not a continually segregating force, right? So, you know, back to the ancient priestesshood, the fall of Egypt, the fall of Atlantis, the fall of whatever <laughs> civilization you want to call it, every single one pretty much, they're all related. This terrible thing that came into the planet happened all at the same time. And, you know, what was the most valuable What's the strongest force of life force they can siphon? It's priestess energy. And so, you know, these witches, also known as women, who are connected to their intuition and to the medicine of the plants and to their own sexual power and their own creativity, they were burned out of the stake. Why? Because the church or the cabal had to come up with an excuse to be societally allowed to basically hijack and kidnap and human traffic these people. And so I've had countless sessions with women, you know, who were witches, who have been burnt at the stake. But for months before that, they were enduring horrible torture, black magic abuse, all trying to hijack and steal their creative energy before they actually get burned at the stake. And the society is just like, oh, they're just witches. <laughs> so... I'm speaking to those of you that have that that just getting punched in the stomach right now you know you're like oh, okay like yeah I, i'm not gonna hide from this anymore i know that's happening to me <laughs> um just know that you're not alone and that it's time for you to reclaim your power right i know that you might be scared i know that the last thing you want to do right now is to express yourself freely again i know but you're not alone and we're here to support and we understand, you know, what that's been like. And it's still not only possible, but it's going to feel so good for you to reclaim your power, reclaim your womb, reclaim your voice. And again, you know, this isn't just for women, you know, even though it's easier for me to connect to women because I'm in a woman's body, I'm married, I have beautiful men around me. And, you know, this is really something that I want to bring in this energy that's going to support in the activation of the God Rod, right? The God Rod does not want to hijack. It does not want to violate. It does not want to degrade. It doesn't want to just sit in the corner and be a creep. It recognizes itself as a pillar of God. A pillar of divine creation. It respects and reveres itself as that. And so I'm really, really just inspiring. Like if you guys are like, I'm getting aroused, good. I need you to be alive. I need you to be excited by life. And I need you to channel that energy right into your heart and go and nourish the world with it. Go heal a woman with it. Maybe not just straight up, <laughs> right? Have tact, okay? <laughs> Don't approach a woman and say, the earth star healer told you to do it. <laughs> You know what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> all right. So, for all the God Rod carriers out there, I inspire you to look into um, semen retention. But again, you know, cycle the energy, right? And I've actually heard that it makes sense that it's not good to retain your semen forever. It's actually enough if you can have three ejaculations, then you can actually ejaculate and you have actually recycled the energy back into your body and not have lost the life force energy. Okay, a little tip for you. <laughs> okay, you guys ready for the next <laughs> topic? <laughs> going to be talking about the inner hieroskamos and this is where people are going to get triggered 
because we want to blame your ex. We want to say that person did this thing to me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys like that? Welcome to the temple where we honor the womb and we inspire the god rod. <laughs> yes, there's only aligned, lit, alive, beautiful, divine humans here. Every single one of you. And we're coming back into our power. Can I get a hell yeah? Or let's say heaven. <laughs> All right. So we're going to dive into the Haros Gamos. Okay, you guys ready? There's a lot of bad information out there about the twin flames right now, you guys. And I literally see tens of thousands of people that are out there looking for their twin flame and creating highly traumatic relationships and then basically staying in them, even if they're abusive because they believe they're with their twin, which is hilarious and really sad. It's hilarious because it's just so far from the truth, right? But it's really sad because all those people are trapped away from their true power. <laughs> and so we want to talk about Hieros Gamos, the union, okay? And this has nothing to do with anyone outside of your own body. This is everything to do with these two energies, these two forces of creation, you know, the yin and the yang. And in the yin-yang, you see that there is a yin inside the yang and young inside the end. They're never separate. They're, they're always merged. They're always together. And so when you have the inner marriage is when your inner feminine and your inner masculine are both unified and working together and in love with each other. I'm going to give some examples of how this happens, okay? Because even right now, in the spiritual community, there's this polarizing force where you're like, oh, women, you're supposed to be a goddess and you have to look a certain way and be really feminine. And men, you have to activate the divine masculine and be really masculine and, and dig, dig in the dirt or whatever. <laughs> and, you know, I've been doing client sessions for the last two weeks. It must have been 20 clients and the inner masculine showed up in every single session. Now, I work mostly with females, okay? Sometimes the inner masculine is like on the other side of this giant canyon. And I'm like, girl, where is your inner masculine? She's like, I, I cut him up and I ate him. <laughs> or, you know, I fired him. Or, you know, he's actually out there running around doing something crazy and, and she's feeling abandoned and neglected. And these are energies that actually you can tune into your body and check in with, and here's how you can tell if you are in alignment, okay? So basically, I feel like the feminine energy is the inspiration, is the one that is free, is the one that is creative, is the one that is free-flowing and it's, it's intuitive, and it's really freedom is a big part of it, where it's, it's just this really free-flowing energy that can be inspired and it responds the moment into the reality, experiences, you know, the central and the pleasure and the senses of the reality. Petting my cat. He's got a little he's got a pine pine needle in his butt. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so, and this goes for the men and the women, okay? Everybody here has the inner feminine. This is the energy, the emotional, the sensitive, the patient, the spacious. The part that feels like there's infinite possibility. I can create. There's creativity. There's energy here. Infinite possibility, right? And then each and every one of us has the masculine energy inside of us. And this is action, productivity, structure, intellect. And so for every single one of us, these two forces have to Im be in balance in order for an inner masculine and inner feminine to be in sacred union 
And that's when the two forces actually merge and they serve each other as they're meant to. And this is where you're at actually Hieros Demos. And only when you're in that reality are you going to actually create an external partner who can love you in a good way, in a way that completely respects and fulfills you in every way. Right? Because, you know, a lot of my clients who are women, they come to me with all these complaints. They're like, my husband, he's like this and he doesn't do that and I can't ever get him to blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, okay, well, do you hold those energies for yourself? Do you treat yourself in those ways that you're asking this other person to? And they realize that actually the person that has been telling them that they can't write that book, they're not good enough, is actually themselves, right? And, you know, as a woman, this is an energy that makes more sense to me. Like, I hope that somehow you can translate that into your world, male beings. Um, because, again, these energies are existent in our bodies. And they are our creative force as well, right? So, for example... Oh, there's something else that I really need to say it just came in. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm just going to take the detour, okay. Here's the greatest thing that I discovered in the last little while that just totally blew my mind. So, you guys, your sexual organs are actually closer to your root chakra than your sacral chakra. That tells me so much about the benevolence and... The loving nature of creator because creator or our higher self or the angelics you know really just this higher more expanded version of ourself we created these vessels so that we could live in them and experience and we decided that we wanted this experience to be pleasurable right that is why the pleasure center is literally in your root chakra the chakra that is connected to the physical reality and is how you perceive reality. Now, when you look at your life, you know, I say, well, how's life? What do you feel like life is? What is your immediate answer? Is it life is ecstatic? Life is pleasurable. Life is abundant. Life is beautiful. Or is it life is hard? Life is full anxiety. I don't have enough money. Making money is hard, right? All of those beliefs about the reality is what's inside of the root chakra. And what's actually really built into the root chakra is your pleasure center. And so you can immediately understand that this reality, these physical vessels, were created for you to experience the ecstasy of life. And you begin to transform. You know, it's like if, if I, I say, what is sex? And if you say, you know, it's strippers and it's a jerk off then like you know that there's some rewiring for you to do and there's no shame in that right it's not your fault you know i discovered porn when i was 11 because somebody in my household left it on the computer and that was the beginning of the degradation of consciousness and it took a long time for me to rewire my mind because you know i have clients and you know this happened to me as well where you start fantasizing about you know painful and violent situations which clearly you would not enjoy if they were real, but somehow the programming has hooked into your pleasure center and your nervous system has learned that those images are what's pleasurable. So now you have to rewire those images and know that respect and reverence and divinity, those are the things that are enjoyable and pleasurable. And this is the whole, whole the, the inner workings, the dark side of the moon of the ascension process, okay? <laughs> stuff that nobody wants to talk about and that is why pornography is so bad for you because it's totally just program your mind to degrade this ancient powerful force of creation it's crazy so I'm just going to touch in with the inner feminine and masculine a little bit more and then we're going to go into our healing. I know we're running a little bit long today. I'm really just passionate about this. I really feel like if everyone was living in alignment and living in liberation of their creation energy that we would just be in a totally different world. And so I want you guys to know that even if you do have these distortions or these traumas like I love you. I think that you are a perfect divine human being and that you just 
went through some shit in the false matrix and you know we can fix that real quick you know we as soon as you remember who you really are you just gotta project that god light right on that and it's like <laughs> actual soundtrack of what happens all right Yep. And so, you know, be gentle with your friends and don't shame them because porn is literally made to be addictive. And I've actually dismantled, you know, energy harvesting stations in the astral plane that are literally just hooking into millions of people that watch porn and just siphoning the sexual energy right into the fallen matrix. And it was built to do that. So an innocent human being stumbles upon that you're just hooked. There's webs, right? And this is, again, the stuff that we're going to be focusing on clearing. It's just, you know, I can't do this for everybody one at a time. And the galactics are like, we can contain everybody in a bubble and clean this up. So this is what we're going to be doing next month. You can find the tickets in the description box is the Pleiades ceremonies over the Pleiadian gateway. And there's a lot of galactics that are getting ready you know, people are having very ayahuasca-like experiences in these ceremonies. And for the most part, we only get to die for one hour. Now, imagine if we're doing that for three to four hours for four days, okay? It's going to be deep. It's going to get in there. And you're going to feel like you had an energy shower and you're ready for your mission by the end of it. That's what I'm hoping. So we're really going all in. We're doing our energy bench presses every day because we're here for this and we're not going to back down until this planet is transformed okay so one example that wants to come in for the inner higher scamos is that for example you have this amazing idea right and you're like i'm gonna write this book and then either you immediately reject yourself and you're like oh no i can never do that or i don't have time you know i i don't know enough yet or you actually tell it to someone you're like hey i want to do this what do you think and they're like no <laughs> you shouldn't do that or maybe they laugh at you or whatever it is the, the reality just rejects you right that is a clear sign that the inner masculine is not in alignment and a different thing the masculine can do is say you know i i have to work i have to do this thing that i don't like to do in order to make money because the masculine then don't trust the feminine. It's not trusting in your innate intelligence and your intuition to be able to create and support you in a way that is in alignment with who you really are, something that actually you really enjoy doing. So the inner masculine can be, and this is ancestral, you know, just think about our parents and how they might be working so hard and they're like, oh, you know, I have to work really hard to make one penny and it's so hard. And so the masculine can really get into this hero complex where he's like, shut up to all your feelings. Like, I got to make sure that we're alive. And so when the feminine actually has this brilliant idea, the masculine just actually immediately shuts her down. And this is an inner, inner process that happens, right? So the correct pathway for this energy to flow is that actually the feminine, this again, for all of you guys out there, this works for you too, because your inner feminine energy is supposed to be the energy that, you know, because the feminine energy is connected to God, connected to spirit in this way, it's just, it's not that ma male energy is not, it's that the feminine energy is just the void, the universe, the nurturance, the creation energy. So it's just, and again, it's like males have this energy as well, right? I'm saying the males and the females, no matter what kind of anatomy you have, your feminine energy is the one that is, free and infinite one with the cosmos one with god right so the feminine is going to receive the inspiration and this be like oh i think i want to do this and there's this flowering energy where you're like you're excited i'm going to create this now then your masculine energy is supposed to come in and say how can i help you how can i create the structure how can i get this done so that we can experience this thing that's coming in for us and so this is the natural process. I know that the, the divine masculine energy is the one that is receiving a lot of deprogramming and transformation at this time. I've just seen that. Like it's like when I have sessions, people usually have like very similar patterns at specific times. And this is just the thing that happens. And so the last two weeks has all about 
has been all about the inner masculine. Again, we're not saying men are dumb, men are stupid. We're saying the inner masculine has received a lot of programming inside the false matrix in both men and women. And that when the masculine energy begins to trust in the inspiration, in the emotions, in the excitement, in life itself, it recognizes that it's here to serve. It's here to support. It's here to give. That's what the male energy is here for. And you can see how that has been totally reversed, right? When the male energy begins to take and violate and destruct, instead of responding to the feminine essence to build and to support and to protect. So again, these are energies that are inside of our own bodies and really recognizing how that creation works for you. Like when you get a really good idea, are you creating space for yourself and you know, honoring yourself as a creator being. How do you treat yourself? How do you perceive yourself? How do you, you know, throw flowers, petals on your path to really hold space for yourself as a divine creator being? Whew, so we're going to be, again, doing that together. I think that's why it's going to be such a powerful experience because, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping that like the men show up for this because you're really important part of the process. You know, we can't have the complete spectrum without you guys. And, you know, once we have the male beings and the female beings all integrated with our inner feminine and masculine, and we all respect each other each as a whole creative being, game over for the elites. <laughs> Seriously, you guys, that's that's just what it's going to take. Whew, so we're lit today. We're going to get ready. I'm going to take a little break just for a couple minutes. If you have to go to the bathroom, whatever it is that you got to do, we're going to go into our healing around this, these things that we just spoke about. I'm going to address, I, I feel in the field, probably restoring certain geometries around pornography. That's a big one. And, you know, inner male domination, it's all inside. It's all inside. And if you're a woman and you're like, I'm a feminist, whatever, and your inner masculine's out of line, girl, you ain't going to get nowhere with fixing this. <laughs> we all have to get back into our innocent and loving nature. Cassandra, the hashtags. <laughs> Hashtag divine god rod. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? Once the hieroscamos come in, you know, every single person that you meet will respond to that energy and will love you and will recognize you as the beloved, right? You're not going to have abusive energies inside of your field because those frequencies are no longer existent inside of your body and for all of you that are like why do men in my life never do this and they never wash dishes and whatever blah 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 uh, i mean this is for real like in the womb healing course that was channeled last year like kara was saying you know it's all inside you need to take responsibility for all the energies and so one day i saw that there, the dishes were piling up and i was like about to get mad, you know, this the thing that, you know, wives do. Why don't you do dishes? You know, I have to do dishes. And Kara was like, Kara was like, no, like you, you got to stop because scan your body for the vibrations inside of you where you feel like you don't deserve to be taken care of, where you have to do everything yourself, where nobody can help you. You're all alone. Nobody loves you. You know, all these little different little things that are creating the reality in the moment, right? And so I went in, I literally just addressed all those energies that were manifesting this reality. And I came into my living priestess presence. And I kid you not, the whole house was sparkling clean the next day. And I didn't have to say anything. And this happens all the time with women that take my class. They start off with like, you know, they're like, oh, like men are so much like this. And then now they're like, men are flying out of the woodworks to support them and help them with no self-serving desires. And you're like, it's all physics, it's math, it's energy, right? Men, are, men feel fulfilled when they feel like they are co-creating, they are giving life to a creation. 
they don't feel fulfilled when they have to go and take from you or they feel like there's not enough life force energy, right? When we're open, when we are in wholeness, this energy is just naturally flowing through us and, and the whole universe responds to the original template vibrations. So anyway, seems like I started rambling again, but I really wanted to take a moment and do the healing. So let's do that. I'm going to stop rambling now. I love you guys. <laughs> so if you feel like this video was potent today, please go and share it with your friends. And I will do more of these rambles on my Instagram account. And I promise I'm not going to turn into some social media person. I'm just going to be myself. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> all right family i'm gonna take a minute drink some water and then we're gonna go into our healing so if you want to get comfortable if you want to lie down um let's get it close this window <laughs> it it's cat I'm also just going to put a link um, let's see here Mike yeah I'm going to put a link to the four day session next month here as well um, because once again, I just really want to know what happens when we go in for four days because I see what happens, you know, when we go for an hour and some incredible healings can occur. And so, you know, when some of these deeper clearings, like if you've been dealing with some of this stuff for years, it really requires a focus, right? Because we can go layer by layer and then if you go one layer and then you leave, then you might have to go through some other layers again before you really get to the core of the trauma. Now, if we're focused for four days and we just keep chucking <laughs> at the trauma, it's really going to make a huge difference. And so if you're feeling called, I posted the link in the comment section. And I really hope that if you are needing this medicine, that if it's calling for you, that you create that experience for yourself so that you can receive that. We're currently researching ejaculation in the house. <laughs> Woo! All right, fam. You ready? Let's go. chamber we are so excited to be here with you to support in your mastery and your healing in your path to wholeness 
So get comfortable and start breathing into the body. Slowing the breath, slowing the energy, slowing your thoughts. Expansion in your spirit. We'll begin by lighting up the heart and feeling gratitude. As gratitude can at times be the energy of exchange. And when you are in gratitude, you are open to receiving. And so fill your heart and your body with the sensation of gratitude for yourself, for creating this experience. To your ancestors and your healed ancestors who shares with you their wisdom. Gratitude for the angelic and galactic team for sharing their presence and their energy and their medicine with us. And gratitude for the creator for being an infinite, unified, divine vibration of love that nourishes us in every moment. As you're filling your body with this vibration of gratitude, we're opening up our field, allowing for the sound vibrations to enter and even move into the densest part of our body and just continue to breathe for a while. above your head and lighting it up with the light of the sun 
and tuning into the vibration of your own soul's essence. And to bring that divine light self vibration of your soul, pull filaments of it, just these thin threads of light down from the soul star into the body, into the places where your light body might need that energy. Higher self, galactic team. We are commanding for an activation of all sexual trauma, distortions, mind control programming, negative alien implantation, and energy siphoning technology. Activating those is, mirror opposite is, merge together with each other, with the Christ opposites up the levels. Bring in all the necessary Christ opposites to remove the occupants themselves. Clean up demons, thought forms, soul fragments, personalities of other people, and etc. On the first three levels, then all levels for all beings in the resonance of this field, if it is in their highest love and highest joy and highest soul embodiment at this time.
self-galactic team we're commanding for a sourcing of all imprints and memories whether they be experienced or inserted of astral abuse abductions experimentation commanding for all of these imprints and these traumas to be cleared completely from all dimensions and all of time space for all soul fragments that may have been taken or lost in the multiverse, for them to be returned in this now, for them to be loved and cleared with the love light of source, and return to each body through their higher self and the high heart, commanding for a complete clearing and closing of all open negative portals, and a cleansing of all of the waste product of bio-spiritual abuse, commanding for a complete clearing of all of these energies from all beings inside these fields, from all dimensions and all of time space, from all parallel selves and timeline realities, and all of the genetics. Thank you. or gives away the ownership of our body, mind, spirit, energy, sexual energy, in all dimensions, in all of time, space, in all parallel timelines. We are commanding for a complete dissolution of all of these timelines. And all of these contracts and agreements which are not in alignment with your highest love and highest joy May all those contracts be cleared from all dimensions and all of time and space. And may all negative entities that are of the parasitic nature be cleared from your body and the field as well in all dimensions in all of time and space. And so it is. Thank you.
breathing into the body. We're actually going to do one more clearing of all patterns of repression, shame, guilt, disgust, all repressive and negative emotional reactions or judgments around sexuality, sexual energy, or other distortions of <clears throat> degradation. We're including the programs of degradation in there as well, just commanding for a complete restoration and clearing of all of those lower nature frequencies and commanding for them to start to transform and restore back into their original source, divine template. And just allow the vibrations to move through your body. and union and ecstatic bliss and co-creation and pure love unify the feminine and the masculine energies within and for those energies to in, be in union with source and the divine love that permeates all of creation and may that union reflect outwards into the whole world. All right, guys, I'm not going to say much, but I'm going to be here for a little bit because I'm going to give people an opportunity to just be with the energy and to soak it in and to return with grace and patience. Just take it slow. It's raining. It's raining. And just asking for each person's higher self to oversee the process of all of the clearings commanded today to their completion if it is in alignment with each person's highest love and highest joy for the higher self to oversee these commands to their completion in the time that is highest 
high most comfortable for each person. And may the shifts that occur today, that inner alignment with your highest love and joy, may it be permanent. We'll just pull in some golden energy into the field to support the integration. And I'll just hang out here for a minute and let the field settle and let everybody a chance to return. There's so much love here for us. So if you're feeling called or if you're intrigued or if that was really beautiful and powerful for you, again, I'm really wanting to get as many people inside of this healing chamber as I can. Come join us for the Pleiades alignment next month four days inside the galactivation chamber what's gonna happen i don't know but i want to find out and if you're feeling called and resonant and you know that this medicine is for you then honor yourself and treat yourself and come and hang out with us for four days over the pleiades gateway um, the link is inside of the description and i'll put it in the chat box as well It's going to be lit, y'all. So lit. Yeah, and for all of you out there that are resonating with the priestess energy, definitely go and check out this free priestess summit. You know, it's literally priestesses from all over the world. I'm literally so excited for it because, you know, there's all of these different mystery traditions from all over the world. But I have a feeling that we're going to find a very prominent unifying force. So the gateway is going to be offered online. Again, here's the link in the chat. But anyway, all the links are inside of the description box as well. And... <clears throat> And we are just super excited and been getting all these upgrades, having the codes come in. It's been in a really interesting couple of weeks getting ready for, for it. All of these original codes of the priestesshood, of the temple. And you know how we do. We go deep. <laughs> so we're really excited to get to experience this together and get to open the gateway for the planet. So I still feel like there's some people are, um, the medicine is still quite active. So I'm just going to wait for a little bit longer and keep the field open for a little bit longer. I seriously love you guys. So it's actually not available in person because we need to be all over the world. And also the land here is just not set up for people to visit at this time. I wish that I can get you guys out here, but there's no toilets. Everybody be like in my house and, you know, I really need to be focused when we do the work. And so unfortunately, we're not going to be doing this in person this year. But guys, soon I'm working really hard every single day to anchor this temple here so you guys can come and experience the energy is on my priority list is number one so um so the free summit is return of the priestess.com and i just put it in the chat box as well <laughs> I am now galactose tolerant. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> I love it. Welcome to all the first timers. I'm so happy that you're here. I'm happy that you have found 
the mothership, that you are in the home frequency of the Starseed mission. Uh, I know that there are a lot of fake galactic federations out there, but you know, we are out here, we are here with you, we are here to support you, we are the hands and feet on the ground, we are the ground crew here to transform this planet with love and grace and in style, <laughs> and so welcome to all of you that are joining us, and I am hoping that you are feeling nourished by the field here, we, we love all of you so much just excited to be here y'all i can't believe you guys all came down here yeah so we're going to be building some crazy sound healing things here um can't say too much about it right now but it's basically going to just be this massive spiral that is going to be next level. I promise you that. The land and the galactics are very clear. Um, so it's not in person. It's on Zoom. Okay, you guys? It's live on Zoom. So you're going to be able to attend from the comfort of your own home, which is really good because we want to create the field all over the world. So there's a video um, that is last week's video. I talk about how the galactics are actually um, landing this light technology and we're going to be able to jump timelines individually and for the collective and so it's actually really important for us to all be in different places on the planet so that we can hold space for the planet okay so yeah it's going to be four days in may um, may 18th to the 21st it's going to be online and the shamanism school will open again in August, but it's going to officially start in September. <laughs> Don't underestimate the power of the galactic energy, though, because, you know, the light ships, they are all over the world. And, you know, people literally have very extraordinary ayahuasca-like experiences that include, you know, weeping and literally throwing up and... And so even though it's on Zoom, at least you're going to be in the comfort of your own home. <laughs> there were people with buckets, which is always a vision that I've been shown. You know, the frequencies are going to be more and more powerful and more and more potent. And so, yes, they're going to be recorded. They're going to be sent out every day. And so you're still going to be able to follow day by day if, you know, you want to do that or you're going to have the recordings, okay? Anyway, I'm just really excited about it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation we had today about my favorite subject. I hope that you take everything that was transmitted here and just take it out into your world right and really be aware of your own energy and how you treat yourself how you talk to yourself how you honor yourself and how you relate to your own sexual energy as if it is the most sacred and powerful force in the universe because it is <laughs> so i think that we're feeling good and complete i hope you guys enjoyed this and i will see you guys next week love you seriously we love you